Oh, yeah. There's been a political earthquake in Sweden, and the reverberations could be felt stateside as our own elections right around the corner. The populist party rose to power there on a message of curbing this runaway immigration and confronting the out-of-control crime that followed. Now, this didn't happen, you know, in a vacuum. Take what happened back in May. Over the course of just eight days in this small neighborhood of the town of Orbro, three young men were shot dead. Now, the neighborhood in which they were killed is made up almost exclusively of Syrian migrants. In fact, it's just one of 61 areas in Sweden listed by police as risks of gang violence. All of them happen to have high proportions of immigrants. Now, right now, Sweden has the highest per capita number of deadly shootings of all 22 European countries. And among shooting suspects, 85% are first or second generation immigrants, according to a Swedish newspaper. And it's why my next guest has promised his conservative Swedish Democrats will be watchdogs for change when they assume power. Joining me now is Charlie Vamers, member of the European Parliament from Sweden. Um, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a lot of fans in Sweden. I have a lot of Swedish friends, and they recommended that you come on tonight. So thank you so much. What Thanks do for America, what, what do Americans need to understand about what's happened in Sweden over a relatively short period of time? Well, you need only to go to events tonight to see what's happened to Sweden tonight. Uh, Sweden broke the record of deadly shootings, 48 this year. Uh, we had a big explosion outside Stockholm tonight, uh, which was heard even in downtown Stockholm. Um, 500 bombings the last four years under social democratic rule, one shooting a day. Sweden is not Pippi Longstocking land anymore, and uh, the Swedes are protesting against that. They want change. They want Sweden to be a safe country again, and that's why they voted for us in uh, so big numbers. Now, a New York Times uh, columnist threw a tantrum after the election in Sweden, uh, writing a piece entitled, Sweden is becoming unbearable. The Swedish far right has profited from the country's growing inequalities, fostering an obsession with crime and an antipathy to migrants. Its advance marks the end of Swedish exceptionalism. <laughs> now, well, at the yeah. end of Sweden, Swedish exceptionalism, you used to be a country that was fairly homogeneous, but welcoming of all people and pretty united. Now, where right. is that? Well, 40-year um, multiculturalism has ended Swedish exceptionalism, I can tell you that. And uh, the journalist at New York Times might wonder why it happens that the Sweden Democrats are the biggest uh, among Swedish Iranians, for naming one example. Of course, the reason for that is that immigrants who come to Sweden work hard and uh, who don't want Sweden to become more like the Middle East, they tend to vote for us. And um, you can see that in, uh, in the uh, discussion on Islamism. We were the only ones raising that issue for many years. Now everyone else is starting to adopt our policies. But uh, we still have a way to go because the state is still funding these Islamist Muslim Brotherhood linked organizations. Um, Sweden um, is still a safe country for Americans to visit, but there are parts in Sweden where I don't recommend anyone to go who are no-go zones. That's the, the factor of, of the matter, and we are going to change that. The type of crime that's being reported in Sweden from friends of mine in very small villages outside of Karlstad or that area, um, th their crimes being described as crimes of humiliation yes. of children. Police say unlike anything they've ever seen. And a lot of this linked to the Salafist uh, Islamists who are joining these gangs and ru you know, just ruining formerly peaceful neighborhoods and communities. But the Salafist Islamist uh, problem is, is, is just horrific there. Yeah, I mean, Sweden was number two uh, jihadist exporter to um, Iraq and Syria during the time of ISIS. And uh, these humiliation crimes, they have increased the last uh, years. We also call it domination violence, where mm. a young person can be 
urinated at, at gunpoint, uh, tortured for hours, uh, just because uh, he's a Swede. And there is such resentment among some people, not everyone, but enough people for it to be a, uh, an increasing problem. And uh, we are the only ones addressing this. And the center left, they keep on um, fighting for more migration to Sweden, even though 20% of the population today in Sweden is bo born outside the country. That's wow. more than America had during the height of its immigration. And we just cannot cope. We need to restrict immigration so that we can solve these problems. Yeah, Charlie, you have to put a halt on that, uh, that migration coming into Sweden. Otherwise, you're going to lose Sweden forever. Swedes have stood up and they said, can't do it anymore. Charlie, we're going to be right. watching this. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to keep our eyes on this movement and how you guys address these problems. Thank you. Thanks for having me.